So I start with um, finding where you're at in the book. So we're going to be doing the Therese Pelothorix rhizopathiae. Um, because and there are other there are other species, but um, this is the only one known to cause um, diseases in humans. And so that's going to be for y'all's um, textbook of diagnostic micro from Mahone and Lehman is going to be on page three fifty four. And then I also take the bottom line approach book, the purple and yellow one, and flip to that page in there which is going to be 147. So I have both of those out and I go back and forth between them. And then if I had, um, it's specifically not for that one, but these other charts, um, I have those out too, so I can consolidate it all together. So some of your key characteristics, it's non-modal. Cat and egg. And then this one's a key one, test tube brush. And the gelatin. So gram positive, catalase negative, non-spore forming, pleomorphic rod that has a tendency to form long filaments. Found worldwide in commensal or a pathogen in a wide variety of vertebrates and invertebrates, including domestic swine, birds, and fishes. Human cases typically result from occupational exposure. Occupational exposure. What's one of those um, occupational exposures? I don't know the, the main one that they talk about usually. Um, the Word document is still on Listeria. Oh, thank you. Sorry. There we go. So individuals working with plants or animals. And then um, also your fish and animals, and then um, fishermen, butchers, veterinarians, and rose growers. And I always remember the rose growers um, because rose thorns will fix you, and that always sounds like the Arista pilothorix. Right here, we got bricks. So the rose thorns, it seems, sounds like poking me. Here it's um, H2S positive in the TSI. So it produces three types of disease in humans, um, Arisi pyloid, which is localized skin disease, septicemia, which is often associated with endocarditis, and generalized um, diffuse cutaneous infection. So if you can remember, most of these things come from, uh, from the skin. Thirty-eight percent mortality rate um, if you get the endocarditis. So 
code cutaneous. Endocarditis. Eight percent mortality. And then the overall term is your Ricci colloid. So who wants to, what's the next thing? So on page 354. What do you think the next important thing might be? So if you're making your own notes. The gram stain. Okay, so what's our gram stain? Gram positive in bacilli. Forms long filaments. Yep. Gram positive. Long filament. What you can associate with a thin and rod shape. Kind of like what filaments look like anyway, right? So singly and short chains, is that differential just for Ricci filothorax? Or do other, can other things um, be singly or in short chain? Other things can be. Other things can be, um, but the V-shape is not um, as super common, so. Um, I know there that can be a V-shape. And it colorizes easily. It could lead to it being gram variable. So what's the next thing? Capnophilic. That's a good one. Yep. And so it's desired plating. Um, notes that it needs to be on a nutrient bra. A nutrient. Broth, 1% glucose. incubated in 5% CO2 at 35 degrees, which is like your capnophilic, right? But if you do not associate those together, then I would go ahead and include this, um, this note. If you do associate those together, then you don't need it. Then we got our, our uh, standard media. So SBA, what do they look like? 10 point non-hemolytic after 24 hours. Yep, so non-hemolytic and 10 point, 10 point, I like what you said, 10 point non-hemo. After 24 hours.
you can put alpha hemolytic after a few days of growth, but hopefully you're gonna try to figure it out a little bit before then. But some of them just take longer to grow. So what's the next key sentence? It's gonna be on page 355. What is it, which one of these words that do y'all need to be looking for when, when reading and taking notes? The tests like catalase, non-modal, Mm -hmm. like All of them? So like your key words that, um, that you need to write down, you know, the words around it is going to be like um, the ones that are suggestive or um, when it gets into your highly characteristic. So we already have that, that it's a highly characteristic test tube brush like pattern at 22 degrees Celsius, um, but things like that. So suggest your suggestive um, notes that is anything that's highly characteristic, um, anything that's differential, um, and then like it's identified well by the Maldi talk. So things like that are really helpful. Um, and I wanted to point out, so earlier I was, I was telling y'all like Listeria, if you could remember your four different um, characteristics that are in your for your gram positive rods like catalase, esculin, H2S, and beta hemolysis. So your li listeria was positive for everything except for H2S, but it was negative. Well, your Arisi pelithrix is um, H2S positive and negative for everything else. So it's reverse that of listeria as far as those four results go. So positive for H2S and then um, negative for catalase, esculin, and beta hemolysis. Always negative. So a negative. And H2S positive. And I thought I'd put H2S positive. That's not the best. I'll put it in. But really, when it comes down to um, but I think when it comes down to it, um, for this one specifically, what you're going to get asked about is going to be like this test tube brush in the gelatin, um, the exposure route, so either working with um, fish, animals, or roses. And then um, I think the other one that, that comes up is no, I think those will, if you ever get asked about it, it'll be along those lines. Um, and then I'm gonna put up here that it is um, alpha hemolytic after a few days. Cause that's kind of differential from, um, from a lot of the other like Listeria and Cranibacterium or gram positive bacilli. Okay. 